Hey guys, what's up? It's me, I'm Stricken, and today I have another DIY project for you that could literally save a life, and I really mean that. This here is something that I built. It's a backup power generator that doesn't need gasoline. Um, basically, it's a car battery that I picked up at a junkyard. Some wiring, some fuse, a little bit of uh, shrink wrap, electrical tape, whatever you want to call it. A, cup, a hole, and a typical car power inverter. This idea came from the Hurricane Sandy victims that didn't have power, didn't have a generator, couldn't afford one. Um, my brother-in-law was stuck during a big storm. His basement flooded, power went out, and the sump pump didn't pump. So he actually rented pretty much an identical system, and it cost him an arm and a leg during the hurricane because all the prices magically rise. So what you have here like I said, a battery, car battery inside, a cigarette lighter port that I bought off of eBay for like five bucks. I'm gonna plug in my power inverter. Depending on the wattage is how long the battery will last. And we have power. And that creates a backup for you. It doesn't make any noise, it's private. And you can literally stow it behind the couch and have it available when you need it, without having to go outside in the rain and inclement weather. Um, for example, it's a minor power outage, like through lightning or something. Uh, if you have an oxygen machine or if you have some kind of essential medical devices that you need to power, this could be the difference between life and death, and I really mean that. So let's get to the supply room and see everything I got. All right, so what we're gonna need for this project is a car battery. Uh, I know these can be typically expensive. Usually people don't have these just laying around the house. I went to a junkyard, picked this one up for 15 bucks, not a bad deal. Added a little water to it, put it on my charger. So next thing I got is this box here. This is a like a battery box for a boat I picked up at Walmart. I think it was around six bucks. This is the larger of the two. Comes with a divider or two. And you can just put the divider in here for the appropriate size battery. Next thing I got was battery terminals that you can just screw on a positive and a negative. After that I got a fuse, inline fuse, some wire for my charger, and I picked these up off of eBay. These are cigarette lighter ports with the appropriate wiring. This one doesn't have the wiring. I could always make it up. Basically they look like this. So you have to drill a hole, stick it in there, and under the cap you have your cigarette lighter plug. Take our battery, we're going to put it on this side away from the notches. Put our battery into this box, scoot it over as far as you can. I just used this strap here, just for something I have laying around. We remove the strap. Take our spacer, slide it in the appropriate, there we go, that looks good to me. This way the battery doesn't slosh around. Yeah, that should be the, the right one. So what's left is we're going to need to basically figure out where the wiring should be. So since we have this much space here, we're going to drill our hole for our cigarette lighter plug about there. Again, your hole is going to differ based upon the size of battery that you have. So with this one, it's two separate pieces. This slides or screws into the backing plate. The backing plate is how it's held on. So basically what we need to do is drill a hole about that big. So get a drill bit or a step drill bit appropriate to the size of the hole you need. On the back of here, it's marked already for you. Plus and minus, plus as being the red wire, negative or minus being the black wire. You want to kind of be under one of these hoods just for uh, safety's sake. So if there is any rain, water's gonna stay away from this connection. I have the lid fully secured and just for 
safety sick. I'm going to check one more time where I want my wiring to be. And that to me looks about right. So I'm going to just trace a circle. Now when drilling, you want to be careful you don't drill into the battery, obviously. So what we're going to do is start off nice and slow, check in the back. And I'm also going to use a shrink wrap as insulation or electrical tape. Slip the wire over in it. We'll use a heat gun later to shrink it. Curl this around, slip it through the positive wire. And basically spin this to a nice tight weave. And you can use pliers to help you do that. Nice and tight, and the connection is there. Just bend that back. All this white stuff is just uh, sealant. And slip your shrink wrap over that, and over the terminal, and just apply your heat, and it'll shrink it up nice and tight. All right, so I have this little wire here. It's already crimped with a nice ring that will go around a negative terminal. Stripped the end of it, twisted it, and just like the positive wire, we're going to slip it through the negative terminal here. And we're going to braid it. Give it a nice tight twist, making sure nothing's really poking out because you don't want it to rip through the uh, shrink wrap here. Slide our shrink wrap on top of it, and now let's heat shrink it up. Here's our heat gun. And we're just going to shrink wrap the shrink wrap. Done. Look at that. Nice and tight, nice and neat. Okay, so we're going to slip our th system through. Okay, we're back. And slip that through. Continue feeding it. Pop that into your hole. And I'm actually going to apply some more caulk in a second here. All right guys, so next thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a little uh, sealant around so that hole is nice and watertight. Basically, I'm just going to apply it, pull out this plug a little bit, and begin to apply it in as even as a, of a bead as I can. This way when I seal it, it's sealed. All right, now that we've applied our caulk, we've applied the rear castle nut, what we're gonna do is we're going to apply our battery terminals. This is a pretty simple process. Just put on your appropriate posts. Okay, we're going to take our negative wire, which has no fuse on it, run it through here. And right onto our negative terminal, apply our wing nut. Right onto the negative terminal. Our positive wire that has the inline fuse. That is now live. All right, guys, now that we have the lid on, everything installed, I went and grabbed a 100 watt power inverter. We're going to plug it in, and if that LED turns on, we're golden. Let's pop your cap. Look at that. See? Now you have 100 watts, or if you get a stronger power inverter, you're going to have more power. Obviously less uh, longevity out of the battery, but you can power all your favorite accessories on the go. At the range, when the power is out, if say you don't want to uh, plug in your gasoline generator, you don't want to run that, you know this is just a temporary little thunderstorm, it's not going to last long, you can simply turn on a light, cozy up to uh, a nice book, to bring this to a picnic, run a radio. Uh, you could run some lights, for example, um, 
in an area that doesn't have a uh, power port, stick this in the back of your truck. You don't have to worry about killing the battery on your truck. When you're tailgating, just pop this on, have the radio going, uh, maybe have some lights, um, you know, whatever accessories you want to power. If you, you're doing a quick uh, construction job, this could be a, uh, a godsend. If, for example, you're real generator guys, you could have some tools running off of this. Um, a laptop, you know, a, a, those gas generators, a lot of them, um, they have very dirty electricity. The energy spikes. So this is a nice constant flow that's not going to destroy your uh, expensive electronics. Also, guys, if you want to, for example, you have a uh, home battery tender or trickle charger and has one of these connections, just simply wire that in. Plus and minus, and have it sticking out the side here. Just have the little mouth of it sticking out. Or just have it under the lid, tuck it away. That's what I'm going to do with this wire, actually. Just add it to the plus and minus. Um, let me know what you think. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you use yours for when you build one. If you do, pop a video on. Tag me with it. Um, if you, you bring it somewhere cool or a new idea you have, you know, say you put two of them in there, or say you stuffed one of these inside the box, and you added an actual port just like that right there. Post a video up, help some people out. You know, this could literally help somebody with, say, an oxygen machine um, when the power goes out. You know, if you have an elderly parent or a grandparent, build them one. It, it literally cost me less than 50 bucks, and I have a really powerful, about two, three, four hours, depending on what I'm running off of it, uh, power supply. That could be a big difference for somebody with an oxygen machine or somebody who's disabled and needs some lighting. So uh, this could be literally sitting behind the couch and have one of these with a trickle charger, 50, 60 bucks, and you could be the difference between uh, a grandparent sitting in the dark for a few hours, not even able to call 911 because everyone's phones nowadays are cordless and uh, needing power. This could be the difference. Let me know what you guys think. Take care.